Better late than never, I will call this city council meeting to order. Um, ordinarily, the first item on the agenda is open forum where people are allowed to speak for three minutes about matters not on the agenda. Uh, looking out over the audience, I don't think anybody out there wants to talk about it, but we're, we're gonna reserve that for right now anyhow. And I think what we're gonna do is open up with our, our concert from the choir. So, ladies and gentlemen, you wanna stand up and, and perhaps, uh, oh, yes. yes and before we start, uh, as long as everybody's up, we're gonna turn around and pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. So once again, at this time, I would like to present the Richfield STEM Dual Language School Combined Fifth Grade Choir. and round.
Our third and final number will be a spiritual called Yonder Come the Day. Thank you, boys and girls. Thank you, parents, for bringing them. And thank you for paying attention and listening to them. I hope that you enjoyed our concert this evening. Thank you, Mayor, for letting us come. And thank you, City Council. We appreciate our opportunity to come and see you. <laughs> thank you for coming. And they were absolutely outstanding. Great job. You guys are free to kick off each of these council meetings, right? Yeah, good. I have to admit the high notes hurt. Huh? Makes you feel good. Yeah, really, that, yeah. America the Beautiful and with the signing was outstanding. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, there's, there's some chance. And really, it's only when we know it's that. Yeah. Like, we like, we probably. Oh, yeah, totally. I, in hindsight, like on the chairs, like, that was so obvious that it was going to be that many people that would be like, um, Thank you. Thank you. Wait till everybody gets back in before we. Right. Okay. So just so we'll go through. Well, we'll go through five, and then just defer the rest till after. And I'll just tell them it's going to be a short council meeting. Okay. Just want to let you know that there may be more. Yeah, we have to. I'm going to do it with a stopwatch on my phone. Because I don't know how that. Oh, that thing works.
How are you? Well, thank you, Mike. You want to come up and read it, or you want me to? Okay, okay. Everyone, if you can please get your seats and kind of hold it down a little bit. We've got uh, open forum now where people get an opportunity to address the city council and the can't get started till you hold it down, folks. Atención, por favor, ya vamos a empezar con el foro abierto. Este, so no, si nos puede prestar un poco de atención, ya vamos a empezar. See, all it took was the voice of authority. We're good now. <laughs> all right. Um, the open forum allows individuals to come up and speak about issues not on the agenda. Needless to say, there's going to be a number of comments tonight. I want to kind of give you how the agenda sets up. Prior to, the, to engaging in the actual matters on the, on the city council agenda this evening, we allow 15 minutes for, for comments from, from constituents. Uh, each constituent is, is allowed three minutes, and so what we're going to do is we're going to limit it to 15 minutes before the city council meeting. We have a short agenda this evening. It shouldn't last more than a half an hour, so anybody that wants to speak uh, stay because after we finish the city council meeting, we're going to reopen the forum and everybody that wants to speak will give an, an opportunity to speak. So be patient, be patient with us. We'll get through the agenda as quickly as possible. And at least starting out, we're going to have five speakers coming up and give them three minutes apiece. Um, the first uh, presenter is Steve Unowski. Just so you know, Steve, I've got the time clock on here. So thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Thank On behalf of Richfield Public Schools, we appreciate our partnership with the city. We have many areas of thriving connections, including partnerships with most of the city-based departments. A thriving city and strong municipal team is of great importance to the school system. As I'm sure you'll agree, strong schools are a part of a thriving community. We want to commend the council for their conversation earlier today. Investment in our city and redevelopment are exceptional opportunities to continue to improve Richfield. Redevelopment can be accomplished through many avenues. As you likely know, the purchase and transformation of Crossroads Apartments into the concierge apartments displaced hundreds of Richfield residents. <laughs> of significant concern to us as a school district is that students had their academic years interrupted. The Crossroads Concierge housed a large number of Richfield students, most of whom experienced a significant transition. 38 of those students experienced homelessness as a result of this situation, which greatly reduced their chances for successful futures. Our school district believes that the city leadership can lead the way in supporting the ongoing investment in Richfield while also supporting the residents of our great city. Our hope is that our city and community will come together to ensure that the well-being of children and families are valued. Our hope is that property-based investments do not come at the cost of human lives and children losing their homes and schools. Our hope is that we can take proactive steps together to protect Richfield citizens, Richfield students, and Richfield families. We believe that the council has a great opportunity to lead the ongoing improvements in Richfield while also supporting the residents and the public school system. We applaud the work of our partners and leaders in city government. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, could you do me a favor and sign in with your name and address, please? Sorry, I should have mentioned that before. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
The next presenter is Eric Schnell from Aon. Eric, could you do the same and sign in and give us your address, please? I want to thank the mayor and the city council for inviting me to speak briefly here. My name is Eric Schnell. I'm the chief operating officer for Aon. We are a Twin Cities based nonprofit developer, owner, and manager of affordable housing. And today is our homecoming. Um, we are very excited to be a new neighbor in here in the city of Richfield as we look to acquire Seasons Park. Um, I need to start by thanking the mayor, the city council, the, the school superintendent, the community members, all the organizations uh, that supported us during an unbelievable week and a half that got us to a point where we now have a signed purchase agreement. Aon is absolutely committed to building communities that ensure safe, high quality, and affordable apartment homes. We believe that our residents are our greatest asset. And in fact, residents in affordable housing are any community's greatest asset. Our highest priority at Aon is ensuring that we will maintain the affordability at Seasons Park. Because having home is critical. Having home is necessary for people to be employed. It's necessary for people to seek health care, to be properly fed, to exercise, to be involved in faith communities, and indeed to sing for you. We want to be a partner with those residents to make home happen here in Richfield, and we're looking forward to that opportunity. We're going to be in this for decades. We're not short-term owners. We're going to be in this partnership with the residents and with you, the council members, for decades to come. And we look forward to working with the council, the school board, Hennepin County, and other elected and government officials to protect and preserve Seasons Park as a vibrant part of the Richfield community. Thank you. Thank you. Next presenter is Camilo DeSantis. My name is Camilo DeSantis. I live at uh, 6501 Woodlake Drive, senior facility at uh, Lindale and, uh, and uh, 66th Street. And the, uh, the, the study session we just came out of was one of the most exciting meetings I think I've been in. And, in months or years, especially on affordable housing. And um, I want to make a few comments that we're, we're happy that Aon is taking the position that it has. And all due respect to Aon, hopefully that is a beginning and that other things will, will follow. And I'd like to make some suggestions for the dialogue that I think our mayor said we, we should be getting into in the future. For one, uh, for a long time, I have felt Housing Redevelopment Authority is only half an agency. It, redevelop, it redevelop, redevelops. It also do housing. I'm advocating that Housing Redevelopment Authority get into the housing business, own, manage, handle housing as part of a partnership between the government, the business, and nonprofits like, like Aon. Um, we should have more contact with other nonprofits because Aon has proved that the nonprofits can salvage and can protect the kind of housing that I think many of us have been concerned about for, for a long time, Common Bond Communities, PPL, those kinds of groups. When we talk about housing, that's the physical structure. People need support services. They need recreation. They need social services. Any of the kind of things that that the exec, the, uh, the executive of uh, of Aon Aon mentioned, and the the truth of the matter is, we do not have very many support services in Richfield anymore. We have lost many of our services, and 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 at the height of it, Mira is probably going out of business in the next month or two or three, and I learned just just tonight that we may also be losing La Mission. So here we have a, a two two significant organizations that are that are going to go by the wayside so support services i think are one area we really we really ought to talk more about i think we should use our moral position in the city more in talking with landlords and owners and that these are human beings and we should be able to talk to them about the trials and tribulations that families 
go through. So, so we should use our moral, you know, our moral um, posi position with the community. Focus F 15, on social 15 seconds, Camilo. Social conscience. Um, we should move to increase the use of Section 8 in our housing in Richfield. We should be advocating more, and I think our city council should be advocating more for, for Section 8 to be, to be uh, in our community. Thank you, Camilo. Time's up. I'm sorry? Time's up. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. We'll have other opportunities, I hope, to, to dialogue more about this. Thanks. You'll have all the opportunities you want. Next presenter is Sue Phillips. Good evening, city council members and community members. I'm Sue Watlow Phillips. I'm the executive director of MICA, the Metropolitan Interfaith Council on Affordable Housing and vice president of the National Coalition for the Homeless. We are very excited to see that Aon is taking on this project here um, and taking over uh, the management of, of uh, this, this apartment complex. And I think if you look at the report sold out by Minnesota Housing Partnership, you can see that we've had many properties here in Richfield that have turned over an ownership uh, since 2010. And I think it's critical that you really look at not only you know just one victory, but many victories. Is that, as you saw all these beautiful, wonderful children here, where are they going to live as they grow up? Where are they gonna have stable homes? We can't afford to have our kids becoming homeless. It has a major impact on their ability to do well in school as well as to be successful as adults. As people of faith, we are Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, and other people of faith that believe that you love and you treat other people the way that you want to be treated. And so we just ask, you know, what would you do? How would you want to be treated if, if your property was going to be sold? Would you want to be evicted out of your property? And so that's true for the rest of the community too, is people want to live here and we need to provide a place for folks to live. Micah believes very strongly that everyone, without exception, should have a decent, safe, accessible, and affordable home in every community. And we applaud the efforts that the city has done with Aon. We encourage you to do a lot more. Thank you. Thank you. Next presenter is Eric Hauge. Uh, thank you, Council, uh, for the opportunity to speak. My name is Eric Hauge with Homeline, uh, 3455 Bloomington Avenue in Minneapolis. Um, just want to thank you for the beginning the conversation earlier this evening uh, at the work session. It's clear Richfield has a chance to demonstrate true leadership among its peers on housing. Uh, it's a conversation that should have been in full force by now following the events at Crossroads at Penn. Unfortunately, it is not yet, and the recent city memo is another misstep on that front. As a representative of Homeline who is framed in the memo as causing harm, we feel it's important to reflect critically on these public statements. Homeline's mission is to provide free legal, organizing, educational, and advocacy services for renters in Minnesota so they're able to solve rental housing problems. We work to improve policies relating to rental housing by involving affected tenants in the process. Our role is to assist when renters face legal challenges, and when those legal rights are insufficient, that role shifts to support efforts to demonstrate regulatory and policy failures within your community that are causing that harm. It's, in fact, it's exactly why the city of Richfield and many other uh, cities in the metro area provide resources for our tenant hotline so we can offer tenants the information they need to pr protect and improve their housing to identify where there are serious disparities and a lack of protections so these issues can be fixed. That's the role we took in that situation. The narrative that's been forced on the community is misguided as the title of the memo, Review of the Transition of Concierge Apartments. Describing it as, as a transition and reducing it to a series of numbers fails to acknowledge and respect the experiences of the residents who were removed from their homes. And contrary to earlier reports that were estimates of around 200 households would be affected, according to the current landlord, 669 of the units that were occupied at the time of the purchase had been vacated as of the end of last year. That's 96% of the units. 
So that admission, uh, th that omission coupled with lack of appropriate context for the real life costs and harms to families and minimizing the important effects that community members and advocates made during the Crossroads displacement does a disservice not just to those households, but it sends a very dangerous message to other families who rent their homes in Richfield. However, the Seasons Park success is a clear counter to that status quo that's advocated for in the memo. It has demonstrated there's another way and the time is now to capture that momentum. We hope to continue to work together with the city, city leaders, uh, just as we did with Seasons Park in tandem with advocates and community members to help <laughs> preserve housing and protect residents. We support your decision to conduct an in-depth forum in partnership with community members and to make commitments on policy solutions for preserving affordable housing and protecting residents' right to remain in Richfield. Thanks for this opportunity. Thank you. Mo seeing that most of the speakers have come in under budget, we'll go to a sixth one before we adjourn till after. Um, the next presenter is Esmeralda Ponce Gonzalez. Quiero agradecer a Homeline que me ha apoyado. I want to appreciate, I want to thanks to Homeline that he's been supporting me. Uh, por la razón que yo acudí a ellos, uh, porque el, uh, el, el apartamento de donde yo vivo, la, el, tercer, uh, el tercer piso se incendió. The reason that I, I went with them, that was because uh, I live on the third floor, and the third floor got in fire. Uh, yo no estuve porque estaba uh, trabajando. A los, yo fui a ver a los managers para ver si me podían cambiar de apartamento porque el apartamento estaba muy roto. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there at the time, and I went to talk to the managers. I wanted to see if they can move me to a different apartment because the apartment that was uh, that was not um, right to to live there. Um, la, yo tengo una bebé de 11 meses y la razón era de que llamé también a la ciudad para que fuera a ver porque a la verdad el apartamento era inhabitable. Yeah, and I do have a, a baby, uh, 11 months old. And also, I, I came here to, I don't even know. I came here to the city to see if they can help me because the, my apartment was not, um, that was not okay to live in there. Uh, y la, la razón que me dijeron uh, fue porque uh, que los bomberos no me dejaron una nota donde yo no podía vivir ahí. And another reason that was the fire, the fire, um, the fire memes, they did not leave me a note saying that I couldn't live there. Uh, entonces, uh, tampoco quisieron pagar un hotel para que a mi familia nos fuéramos a un hotel. And, and they didn't want to pay for a hotel so my family and myself can go and stay there. Estuvimos viviendo ahí eh, esos días y... Ellos metieron unas máquinas para absorber el humo y absorber el, secar el apartamento. So I was living in the apartment. And they, the guys that went there to just to clean and, and dry up the apartment and take out, take out the smell of the smoke. Uh, y los de Homeline son los que me han ayudado para, uh, este, para hablar con los managers y para que pongan atención a arreglar ese apartamento porque todavía no lo tienen terminado y casi lleva casi un mes. Yes, in home line they're been helping me with that because the apartment has been a, a, a month 
and they haven't done yet. I'm s sorry, but, but the time is up. Thank you very much for, for coming up and speaking to us. Okay, thank you. As I indicated, we have some cards left that will be called after we, we adjourn the city council meeting. I've also been told that we ran out of cards, so if you didn't get an opportunity to turn a card in, don't leave because you'll still have an opportunity to speak if you, if you wish to. So at this time, we'll move on to the city council agenda and I would ask for approval of the minutes of the regular city council meeting of April 11th, 2017. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, the minutes are approved. At this time, I would ask Ms. Karen Schrag, the director of the Woodlake Nature Center to meet me at the dais. Good evening. Um, once again, uh, this is kind of an annual event where, where we receive and we present to you the Earth Day Arbor Month Proclamation. I'm gonna read this. Whereas Earth Day was celebrated nationwide on Saturday, April 22nd, to bring awareness about the need to care for the environment, and whereas Arbor Day is celebrated nationwide on Friday, April 28th, and Arbor Month is celebrated in Minnesota during the month of May, to promote the value of planting and caring for our trees. And whereas Richfield's forestry, forestry division participates in the Tree City USA program to promote efforts to preserve, maintain, and manage the health of Richfield's urban forest. And whereas the community of Richfield is encouraged to participate in park cleanup efforts throughout the year, particularly in April and May, to demonstrate good stewardship of our green spaces and natural resources and Whereas the Earth Day was celebrated by the city of Richfield at Woodlake Nature Center on Sunday, April 23rd, with a Sunday special event that included tree plantings and invasive species removal. And whereas trees and forests produce clean air, naturally filter groundwater, provide settings that reduce stress and improve mental health, reduce exposure to sun's UV rays, and provide a home for many animal species. And Whereas trees and forests provide a natural environment that encourages exploration, creativity, and activity. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the city of Richfield observes Earth Day, Arbor Day, and Arbor Month and proudly participates in the Tree City USA program to promote environmental stewardship and demonstrate mindful choices with respect to our natural habitat. Proclaimed this 28th, 25th day of April, 2017. Thank you so much. I want to report to the council and to uh, mayor that, um, and, the, and to the citizens of Richfield that we had 82 people come on Sunday to our to our event. Um, we we planted um, trees and pulled buckthorn and picked up litter, so it was great. And look forward to seeing a lot of you uh, this Friday night. Oh, it's already uh, the fall dinner. It's going to be um, the Friends Wood Lake dinner. Our big fundraising dinner of the year will be at the Minnesota Valley Golf Course, and we are full, and we have. A great time plan. Thank you very much. The next item is the presentation of the Richfield Tourism Promotion Board, Inc. audited financial report for year end December 31st, 2016. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Lori Nelson. I'm the CEO of the Richfield Tourism Promotion Board. With me this evening, I have Adam Selby, who's RTPB president, and Roger Plath, CPA and partner in Lafayette, Nelson and Plath, the accounting firm which conducted the audit of RTPB's 2015 and 2016 financial statements. Adam and Roger, can you please stand up for the folks? Thank you. They're my backup. <laughs> uh, we wish to thank Lafayette, Melson, and Plath for their many years of service to RTPB as independent auditors. Following review of the year's 2015 and 2016 financial statements, Lafayette, Melson, and Plath provided us with a clean audit opinion, as well as identifying several best practice opportunities to assist us with continued transparency in the future. 
The audit management reports and the 990 tax return were presented to the RTPB board at its meeting on March 7th, 2017. And after discussion, the board voted for approval. Board members include the owners or general managers from three of the four hotels located in Richfield. Adam Selby, who's here tonight with the four points by Sheraton. Raj Bakta from American. Devin Makadia from the Candlewood Suites and a fourth board member, Gordon Vizicki, representing the Richfield Chamber of Commerce. In 2015 and 2016, the RTPB's promotional and marketing activities focused on digital marketing, including but not limited to search engine optimization, social media marketing, a series of promotional stay and play packages, and the publication and distribution of a summertime coupon booklet featuring area businesses displayed at the hotels. RTPB also supported local community events such as the July 4th celebration and also the Woodlake Nature Center's 5K Urban Wildland Fun Run. So we're very pleased to do that. In 2017, we will further work to capitalize on upcoming major events in the Twin Cities, including the 2018 Super Bowl and the NCAA Final Four in 2019. In addition to our current events promotion, we will be promoting Cinco de Mayo with area restaurants and other businesses. And our primary focus will be on appealing to potential visitors based on Richfield's proximity to the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport, the Mall of America, and to appeal to budget conscious consumers. So thank you again for your attention. Um, I will stand along with the others for any questions you may have. Any questions? Thank you much Thank for you the very presentation. Much. That was as stimulating an audit <laughs> I've, I've heard this year. I, pre I appreciate it. Well, it was hard to follow the choir. I mean, really, anybody. You know, it's a tough act to follow, it's isn't a very it? Tough act to follow. <laughs> Next item is council discussion, including hats off to hometown hits. And as always, we start with my favorite in regards to hometown hits, Council Member Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. I, I got. I got to tell you the story about the mayor. Uh, this morning, I I texted him at 2:36 a.m. and he didn't text me back until 4:18 a.m. So he must have slept in. A little bit younger, need more sleep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I I. Um, you know, when you're talking about uh, hats off to hometown hits, we have a lot to be proud of. And what happened at the study session is a big reason for us to really um, throw our hats up in the air and say thank you. Uh, we're going to do this, and we've got to do it together, and we're going to do it in a very positive way. And, uh, and, we can, and, and together we can make things happen. The other thing I want to let people know, and they may not know this, but um, we have to abide by the open meeting law. Uh, otherwise known as the Sunshine Law, and that means that um, we cannot, only two council members can talk amongst each other. They cannot talk to a third council member. So we have to wait until we act, act, actually have a meeting so that we can start conversing on a topic of significance like this particular issue. Uh, we cannot um, violate that law to do so would put us in, in jeopardy of liability. Uh, so please understand that we're all together in this and that we welcome you um, to participate and to know that we care about each and every one of you, all of, all of us, but not all of us can participate at the same time in the dialogue that you probably want and desire. Quería decirle a ustedes, los latinos, que nosotros tenemos una ley eh, por el estado de Minnesota que dice que no podemos nosotros ir a la comu comunidad y todos los cuatro de nosotros participar. Entonces, como, uh, como pasó ahora con, con este tema, fue María González y Mike Howard, y ellos los dos, Fueron a la comunidad y averiguaron y escucharon y hablaron. Y la cosa es que si vieran ellos hablar con nosotros, entonces no hubiéramos estado bien con la ley. 
pero a nosotros sí nos importa todo lo que está pasando y todo lo que, lo que piensan ustedes, pero tenemos que esperarnos hasta que nos juntamos en una, en una reunión para discutir todo y que todo nos, todos nosotros tengamos la misma información. So, um, I just translated the, the law. So, please know that uh, we appreciate anyone that is uh, coming forth with some information. We want, we want to accept it and we want to study it and we want to move forward on this. And uh, John Stark, I don't, know, I don't know where he's at, but John Stark is our community development director. He is the person that uh, we want to connect you with. Um, he, he works very hard with the HRA and, and with um, housing, and so I hope that you will reach out to him and, and of course, keep calling us uh, also. Uh, we can respond individually, but not together. And you can also call uh, Mr. Devich, who, um, you know, who is uh, uh, with the HRA also. So we appreciate your participation, and we celebrate it, and we, um, and we thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Regan Gonzalez. So I'm going to speak in Spanish first, and then I'm going to um, say what, what I'm saying in English after. So hats, to, um, hats off to Hometown Hits. Es una oportunidad para nosotros para este decir las gracias a algo a gente de la comunidad o este, dar um, atención a algo lo, de lo que está pasando aquí en Richfield. So, yo quiero este, tomar este tiempo para decir bienvenidos a su casa, aquí al City Hall de Richfield. Y yo me siento tan es, inspirada que hay tanta gente aquí que está apoyando los inquilinos, las familias y la comunidad de Richfield. Gracias por asistir, por escuchar por compartir sus historias con nosotros y posiblemente enfrentar un poco de miedo y incomodidad. Si no fuera por las relaciones, la dedicación y la acción rápida de nuestra comunidad, podríamos tener un resultado muy diferente con la venta de Seasons Park, una realidad que todos nosotros conocemos muy bien, el desplazamiento de cientos de familias y estudiantes de Richfield. Podemos ignorar el hecho de que nuestra comunidad está cambiando y creciendo o podemos ser proactivos y colaborativos para lograr nuestra visión compartida. Tener viviendas económicas de calidad es fundamental para un próspero Richfield. Mi pregunta a todos ustedes esta noche es por favor siguen trabajando conmigo y con la ciudad para lograr nuestra visión compartida de un Richfield donde todos nos sentimos seguros incluidos y felices. Trabajaremos para encontrar soluciones y tomar acción. Recuerden, el resultado de Seasons Park no habría ocurrido sin el amor y dedicación de esta comunidad. Gracias por venir esta noche y espero construir alianzas y tomar acción con todos ustedes. And I'm going to say the same thing in Spanish. Um, welcome to City Hall tonight. It is so moving to see so many Richfield residents who care about our renters, our families, and the community of Richfield. Thank you for attending. Thank you for listening, sharing your stories, and possibly facing a little bit of fear and discomfort. If it weren't for the relationships, the genuine concern, and quick action of our community, we might have a very different outcome with the sale of Seasons Park a reality we all know too well, the displacement of hundreds of Richfield families and students. We can ignore the fact that our community is changing and growing, or we can be proactive and collaborative to achieve a shared vision. Quality, affordable housing is a cornerstone to a prosperous Richfield. My ask to all of you tonight is to please keep working with me and our city to achieve a shared vision of a Richfield where we all feel safe included and happy. Let's work towards finding solutions and taking action. Remember, the outcome of Seasons Park would not have happened without the love and dedication of this community. Thank you for coming tonight, and I look forward to building partnerships and taking action with you all. Thank you. Councilmember Howard. In Spanish, please. 
<laughs> I did hear my name referenced in Spanish, so I hope it was good. You just don't know what was said. That's right, that's right, for better or for worse. Uh, I, too, want to thank everyone for being here uh, tonight. The comments were made, that t something to the fact that it's been a whirlwind of the last two weeks, and wow, is that the truth. Um, there just is a story here of a, a victory for our community, and there's just so many people to thank. And I want to thank Councilmember Reagan Gonzalez for her tireless advocacy. I don't believe we're in this positive situation here today without for her tireless and advocacy and tenacity for a community. And that can be said about a lot of other, and this doesn't happen without a community working together. I want to thank our school board and our superintendent for their advocacy on behalf of our students. Uh, I want to thank uh, our state legislators, Representative Linda Slocum and Senator Wickland for making calls. Uh, I want to thank housing advocates and the community, uh, the, the broad community that took action, um, who saw a problem and, and leapt uh, to get to work. And then I want to thank Aon for being here today, uh, for stepping up uh, for our community. It's just your, your comments that you, you're going to be here for decades. It hits, hits home hard. We, have, of course, have a lot of work to do, but uh, what, a, what a story uh, that's beginning here tonight. Uh, and as I said lastly, I just want to thank everyone who's here. Again, this doesn't happen without a community uh, telling us as, as, as a council what you value, and, and you value access to affordable housing for all. Uh, we had a work session that many of you all attended, and, and we talked about some of uh, the, the problem uh, that's confronting our community, uh, Lisa Horn of Veep called it a crisis, and we need to respond. And it, we just had a very good opening discussion uh, at our work session about some of the policies that I think we can take a look at uh, to be proactive as a city uh, on these issues. And, you know, the, I think some might think a, a city the size of Richfield the, the forces uh, that come to bear on some of these issues are just too large for us as a city to address. Uh, but I reject that. I think that when, when we uh, hear the stories from our community, we have to find a way to take action, and, there, and there's ways we can. And what would sort of been on my mind the last week, uh, especially the, uh, about a week or two ago, is you know there's these large moving, uh, you know, real estate deals and renters in particular whose lives are immeasurably impacted by those decisions don't have a voice. We have to be that voice. Our community has to be that voice and, and be advocates. And that requires us to, to show some urgency and be strategic and, and find ways for our city to have a role uh, to improve housing for everyone in our community. Um, and then lastly, I just want to comment on you know, there's a, I, I think morally we have a, a role here to play to, because everybody deserves affordable housing. But it's not just our moral duty, it's the right strategic decision for our city and our future. Uh, too often, I think, in some of these housing situations, there's a trade-off that's boiled down to, oh, we could, if we lose a, a few hundred residents here, a, and then a building is turned into something else when we increased our tax base here. Um, well, that's an equation that just doesn't compute or doesn't work for Richfield. And, you know, our city's richness, I would say, comes not from our tax base, but from our people, the people that are here tonight. And that's why we as a city need to work hard and provide quality, affordable housing, and, and be it a voice charging forward for all of us, for renters, for homeowners. Everyone uh, needs a safe place to live. And the discussion we had tonight was a, in our work session, I think provides the opportunity to move forward. And what really provides us the, the will to move forward is all of you showing up. The power in all of you being here in communicating to us as a council about the kind of city you want to live in, that's how we move. That's how we become a leader on affordable housing for all. And so my only ask 
is that you continue to come. We have more to do. We have more forums and, and more work ahead. And your voice and your presence will be an immeasurable help as we move forward and build a, a future in Richfield that all of us are a part of, a future that uh, will, will make Richfield a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. I'm gonna take a little bit of a different slant on the unity and the sense of community that's been evidenced here tonight and invite you all to show up at Veterans Park Saturday morning at 10 o'clock to, to clean the park. Um, we had a citizen at the open forum a while back suggest that we talk about pride in our community, we evidence pride in our community, but come spring when you walk through the parks, particularly Veteran, Augsburg, Donaldson, uh, it's, it's showing the vestiges of a long winter and things buried under the snow. And she made the suggestion that the city council, the mayor, the staff, people that, that uh, work for the city and with the city, as well as the citizens show up and spend a couple hours in the parks and go through there, get them cleaned and, and present them as the jewels they are of the community. So once again, I'm just gonna suggest that you continue to take your sense of pride in the community and what the city council is attempting to do in terms of maintaining the affordable housing and evidence in Saturday morning. It's gonna be a decent day. You go out, you pick up a few things, you see your friends, you see your neighbors, and you go home that afternoon feeling like you've accomplished something in beautifying Richfield, which, which once again uh, is, is a civic duty that should be enjoyed and, and practiced by everyone. So see you Saturday morning. That's the end of that. At this time, I would ask for approval of the agenda. Uh, Mr. Mayor, yes. I have a, a amendment to move an amendment to the agenda. That would be wonderful. I would move that we add an item to appoint a member to the Transportation Commission. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The agenda thus is amended to include the appointment of a, a new member of the Transportation Commission. Um, next item then, uh, I guess I don't know that we moved the agenda. The agenda in general. Well, we, we, does that just we, we, move we to the moved, end? We moved the amendment, but you still oh. need to move the agenda itself. Oh, I'll move the the amended agenda. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The agenda is so amended. Um, at this time, we have the consent calendar. City manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, for those in the audience here and those at uh, home. I, I take some umbrage at the madam. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. I'm so used to the last 12 or That's 10 okay. years. okay. I just had to tweak you a little bit. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, the consent calendar contains several, several separate items which are acted upon by the City Council in one motion. And once the consent calendar has been approved, the individual items and the recommended actions will also have been approved and no further Council action is necessary. Well, tonight we only have one item on consent, and that is consideration of the approval of resolutions for reimbursement of certain expenditures from the proceeds of reconstruction bonds to be issued by the city for 66th Street reconstruction and the six-year mill and overlay projects, and that concludes the consent calendar. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The next item on the agenda is the consideration of the approval of a resolution directing XL Energy to underground overhead utilities along 66th Street between Xerxes Avenue and 16th Avenue and support the recovery of $1,325,000 to XL Energy through a surcharge to the city rate, city's rate payers. Um, the city council identified undergrounding of parallel private utilities within the city's right of way as a goal for the major roadways within Richfield. XL Energy has provided the city with a cost estimate that defines the difference between relocating their facilities from overhead to underground to be $2,200,000 within the project limits. Hennepin County will pay $875,000 towards the cost of XL's undergrounding work and the city will be responsible for the remainder of the cost estimated at $1,325,000. The city may pay XL Energy directly or XL Energy may utilize a special facility recovery mechanism. The mechanism would place a surcharge on the ratepayers. In this instance, the surcharge would be $2.33 per month per meter for residential customers. 
No provision has been made for the $1,325,000 estimated cost within the project budget or the city's 2017 general fund budget. Uh, city manager, can, can you perhaps translate that into lay, layperson's language? Uh, um, Mr. Mayor, I certainly can't, but the public works director probably <laughs> could. Uh, Mayor Elliott and council members, um, what we're talking about is the cost of the or the undergrounding of the parallel utility lines, and um, we have to pay Excel directly for that. In lieu of that, they'll do a surcharge um, onto the residents, the utility users' bills of two dollars and thirty-three cents a month for the course of thirty-six months. That would cover the city's portion of those fees. Okay, and it's just a shared fee cost arrangement, correct? Yes, it so it pays for the undergrounding. Um, we've done it on all our projects to date. We did it on Portland, um, 76th Street. We did it on the 76th Street Bridge. It's just our way to get the utilities undergrounded. There's no okay. other funding source for that. And the funding is basically standard operating procedure per se? Per se, Okay, yep. thank you. Mm -hmm. So at this time, I would move to, well, first of all, any questions in regards to the explanation of what we're doing? Okay. No. At this time, then, I would have moved to approve a resolution directing XL Energy to underground overhead utilities along 66th Street between Xerxes Avenue and 16th Avenue and support the recovery of $1,325,000 to XL Energy through a surcharge to city rate taxpayers. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the motion is passed. Uh, city manager's report. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the city council. Oh, I'm sorry. Strike that. Oh. Um, the amended uh, agenda called for the appointment of oh. a commissioner to the Transportation Commission. Yes, we had a, a vacancy on the Transportation Commission, and if folks might remember, we interviewed several very quality applicants uh, in January, and so we had a lot of very good people to choose from. Uh, but we have appointed Wesley Dunzer to the Richfield Transportation Commission. Uh, and I, I'll need to hit the exact term. Do, do we have the term length handy? The term length, because it's a midterm. I'm, so we, so the, I'll make a motion to appoint Wesley Dunzer to the Transportation Commission uh, through 2008, January 1st, 2018, I believe. January 31st, 2018. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, uh, Mr. Dunzer is now a transportation commissioner. Thank you. Um, claims and payroll? We have the city manager's report. Oh, city manager report. I cut you off before, then I wasn't gonna let you speak. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, while I don't have a report to make, I, you know, we don't take enough time to recognize um, some of the things that we do, but in this particular instance, I'm gonna have the Public Works Director talk about oh, yeah. uh, in a, an impressive award I think we got. Thank you, um, Mayor Elliott and council members. This was posted on Facebook last week, so you may have seen it, but um, Portland Avenue Reconstruction has won its first award. Um, well, the only one we've applied for at this point, but um, this award was given to the city by the Minnesota Department of Transportation. It's their um, environmental stewardship awards, and it was um, awarded in the urban context sensitive solutions category. Um, so we're looking at a, a road that was challenged with uh, narrow right of way and being able to accommodate all modes and improve the um, safety and the usability of the road for pedestrians, bicyclists, um, and transportation, and transit users along the corridor is what made this award um, uh, come to fruition. It's uh, things like medians for pedestrians crossing the street, the boulevards, so we can keep the sidewalks um, passable in the winter for the transit riders and the pedestrians alike. We got bike lanes and all the good stuff on Portland Avenue. Just wanted to present it here if you hadn't seen it on Facebook, and um, Steve asked me to do this. <laughs> well, very nice, very nice. It is definitely worth celebrating. I know that, I, I think we've mentioned this before, but we had uh, a meeting with Bloomington officials and they oh. kept raving about Portland Avenue and I think it can be a model. And so congratulations on the award uh, and it's clearly deserved. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'd just like to say I get excited every time I drive by Portland Avenue to get to work or anywhere. And there's so many people walking, pushing strollers, walking their dogs, biking. It really makes me happy. I'm very proud of the work on Portland Avenue. Claims and payroll? Um, I will move claims and payroll. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The claims and payroll is passed. Um, we now are back at the open forum. So I will start calling names again. And like I said, if you didn't get a chance to fill out a card and put it in, um, queue up or just move to the chairs over there and I will call you as, as, uh, as appropriate. Um, the next presenter is Adam Burnside. You know, Mr. Mayor, as, yeah. as he's coming up, I want to say to um, to our city manager that, you know, that he really looks nice tonight, and I like that new tie, uh, really sharp looking. And I want to say to you that I appreciate it the way you ran the meeting uh, at in the Bartholomew room. I thought it went really well, and thank you for your leadership and making that happen and being prepared, and uh, it went, went smoothly, and I appreciate it. Thank you, that, that means a lot, and I truly appreciate your comments. Mr. Bernstein, you're on the clock. Thank you, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, the topic I have is, a few weeks ago, I called and to speak with City Manager Devich to speak about the handling, the way the city has handled the termination of Officer Nate Kinsey. Um, more specifically, uh, the handling of the arbitration decision in that case. Um, I left two voicemails, neither of which were returned to me. Um, then I reached out to my city council woman, Ms. Regan Gonzalez, uh, through email, and we corresponded, and she was going to meet with me, but then reneged on that. So I have yet to speak to anyone about the topic uh, or about the lack of communication. Uh, now, for full disclosure, um, I work for Law Enforcement Labor Services, the union that represents Officer Kinsey and the other Richfield police officers. I'm not here speaking in that capacity. I'm here speaking as a resident of Richfield. I moved here a year ago. Uh, we'll be married on Saturday. We're we'll raising my family here. Uh, and um, was taken aback at uh, both the handling of, of the arbitration decision and the lack of communication uh, from city staff and elected officials. Um, my basic concern is that with the city uh, filing a lawsuit in an attempt to vacate the arbitration decision from last December, reinstating Officer Kinsey, uh, that it, it uh, A, is giving the city a black eye. It makes it look like the city um, is, uh, has sour grapes over losing that arbitration decision, where Charlotte and I determined that it, uh, Officer Kinsey should not have been terminated, should not have had his um, career ended for the actions that he took. He should be disciplined, but should not be terminated and lose his career over that. Um, and I, in my working in labor relations uh, for the last 10 years, uh, it's going to be uh, a waste of taxpayer money, um, and it's going to give, I believe, the city a black eye, and I think it's going to make it harder for the city to recruit law enforcement uh, to the city. I don't know, uh, in, a, in a time when there's a shortage of officers to apply for positions, I don't know why we want to be in that position. Um, but that's my position on that. Uh, but more importantly, um, through this whole process, I feel devalued as a resident of Richfield for not having um, a city employee return phone calls to me and not having uh, elected officials agree to meet with me. Um, and I understand that there, uh, it's a sensitive topic, that a lawsuit is pending, and maybe the law can't be discussed. Um, but I don't know why a phone call can't be made. I spoke with other city managers who were surprised that uh, a phone call couldn't be made, and that explained to me and given me the opportunity to express my opinion on the matter. Um, I expect more from the elected officials. I expect more from city employees. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to respond to that, please, if I could. In the, in the spirit of full disclosure, Mr. Burnside, uh, within 15 minutes of the time you left your message wanting to talk about this matter, yet you knew full well, was in court, I contacted the chief legal person for law enforcement labor services, told them that you'd phoned me and that it was not appropriate for me to be talking about that matter that was in court. And I asked him if he wouldn't talk to you about that and explain to you, if we weren't aware of it, 
that we, I was not in a position to talk about that. He said that he would had done that. And in full disclosure again, Mr. Burnside, you called me again and were, you seemed upset that I called um, the legal staff at LALS uh, to talk about this matter. And the matter of a lawsuit between LALS and the city of Richfield is a different matter than the fact that you're a resident of Richfield. Um, and in the capacity as a business agent for LALS, the entity that we're in a lawsuit with, puts a completely different picture on whether or not I'm going to sit and talk to you about that particular matter. Now, if I need to talk to LALS again about that, to the legal pe people at LALS, uh, I'll probably do that tomorrow. Uh, maybe we can get that understanding. I, maybe the city attorney would like to comment as well. Well, Mr. Mayor and Council, and I know normally we don't get into a, a dialogue here at Open Forum, but I do think it's um, worthy of pointing out that we are in the middle of pending litigation right now. It's not a, a practice for the city manager or staff to engage in conversations with city residents about pending litigation. Certainly the status and the fact that there is a lawsuit is public information, and that's and that's fine. Um, I would also take some um, uh, contrary view of characterizing this as sour grapes. The city is, is certainly um, only exercising its legal rights under state law to appeal the decision, and that was done in good faith, and after a lot of examination and consideration by the city council and the city staff. And so I, I think that uh, no more needs to be said about that. May I respond? Um, no, but the one thing I would comment to, and it just because it, there's people waiting and this is not the proper forum front, but what, what I would suggest is that from my experience and from my perspective, I can't account, and I know that you're upset about what you think were failed return phone calls and everything. Um, historically, the, the city is responsive and, and this, this has been, uh, that's from a citizen that's been here for 40 years also before I became mayor or the city council and everything. So historically the response has been good. Uh, whether or not you're accepting of what Mr. Devich told you. Um, Mr. Devich told now or before? Mr. Devich told, told now, me just nothing. Just what, what, what you were told. I'm saying I'm just going to put my perspective on it. And, and I'm saying that, that it, given, given your, your, your employment and everything, you know, and I'm not going to know say what you were aware of or whether or not you talked to legal counsel or anything like that. But anytime there's active litigation going on, doesn't matter if you're a citizen, a lawyer, or or you're just an interested bystander, they're not going to talk about it. They can't. So, um, and to be honest with you, your your council member can't either. So, so no one is trying to 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 uh, disrespect you or otherwise close you out of the communication circle, it's just that they can't. So with, with that being said, if you have additional concerns and everything, call me anytime, we'll talk about everything except the litigation or about your concerns about Mr. Kinsey, but let's not touch on the litigation because it could get us both in trouble, okay? If Mr. Devich had called me and given me that information, I wouldn't be here today. Well, he couldn't, he passed it through your legal counsel of, the, of your employer, so he, he, he did what he was supposed city. to do. So. Thank you for your comments. Once again, if you have issues you want to talk about, uh, things involving the police department or something that are non-litigation matters, call me anytime. Coffee, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning? Um, uh, you know, you're going to have to check with my legal assistant. I never know where she's going to send me in the morning. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Next presenter is Arlie Naranjo. And excuse the pronunciation if that is so terrible. Ah, buenas noches. Ah, bueno, hoy gracias a Homeland estoy aquí. Good night, everyone. Thanks to Homeland, I'm here. Ah, pues yo no sabía la situación que está pasando en los apartamentos de Sessions Park. I didn't know what was the situation that is going on in the apartments of what? Sessions Park. Sessions Park. Ah, estoy aquí porque ah, tengo a 
hablar con ustedes, no solo por mi familia, sino por toda la comunidad que vivimos ahí. And I'm here because I, wanna, I don't want to speak just for myself. If I want to speak with all the community and all the people that live there. Pues si llega a pasar lo que um, se está rumorando, no sé exactamente qué es. Pienso que los más afectados serían nuestros niños y nuestros jóvenes. If there is some rumors that they are going on, and if that happens, my kids, they are going, our kids, they are going to be. Uh, Igual los jóvenes serían los más afectados. My, our kids and our teenagers, they're going to be the most affected. Uh, yo quiero permanecer en Richfield, mis hijos. Quiero que se gradúen en Richfield. Uh, quiero que nos ayuden, que nos informen, ya que la, um, la oficina de los departamentos no lo hace. I want to I want to stay in Richfield. I want my kids to graduate in Richfield. I want to live in Richfield. But I want the office to let us know what is going on. A la otra um, opción para mí sería quedarme porque tengo un niño con um, especial que va a la escuela cerca de mi casa que es PA. And the other option is that I want to stay because I ha I do have a special kid that it goes to uh, to a place closer to to where I live. Ah, uh, me preocupa por um, no solo los adultos sino más los niños y si puedo ayudar en algo no solo por mi familia sino por la comunidad eh, estoy dispuesta a hacerlo. And I'm not worried yes about my kids even for an adult too. And if I can help in something for myself and for my community I can do that. Gracias por su ayuda y por su atención. Thanks for your help and for your attention. Thank you. The next presenter is Asad Ali Wade. Ali Wade. Okay. Um, Linda Soderstrom. Good evening, and thank you for um, letting me visit you again. I um, lived at Crossroads. Um, I now live at 5277 West 82nd Street in Bloomington. And um, I was forced out uh, exactly one year ago this week. Uh, I'm not yet recovered from that insult, and I'm still working on getting healthy after that. Normandale Lakes is a nice enough area, but my rent is still climbing steadily. My grocery access is nil. I have no car, I have no busing on evenings and weekends, uh, no public transportation at those times, and absolutely no assurances that I won't have to move again as my rent goes from 40% of my monthly budget to 50. I am here to listen and, and learn, and I'm optimistic that Richfield can get this right. Uh, it will require a paradigm shift in values and mindset, very deep work. I may not um, need, uh, uh, sorry, I may need, um, let me start over. It occurred to me tonight when I got here that Seasons Park is a place where people who are still at a loss from crossroads may need to, to seek to live for affordability. So um, I may need that at some point in the future and others may need it much more desperately. And that hadn't even occurred to me. So you see, we all just have to keep thinking and get creative and let these things occur to us. And I thank you for allowing me to come back and visit you again. Thank you. Thank you. Owen Duckworth. Um, hello, uh, my name is Owen Duckworth. I'm a coalition organizer with uh, the Alliance for Metropolitan Stability. Um, we do coalition organizing across the Twin Cities Metro, uh, working on issues such as affordable housing, public transit, and others. Um, and um, 
just wanted to come tonight um, uh, to talk a little bit about, um, first of all, thank the city council for their leadership. Um, heard word a few days ago about the potential uh, Seasons Park sale um, and for the council members especially put in work to connect with Aon and have the property um, bought up by a, a owner who's committed to maintaining and providing uh, dignified housing, affordable housing for current residents. Um, I think I, I can't, of course, talk about this without talking about Crossroads um, in the context of, of this region and the context of Richfield as a city. Um, this is a very stark contrast, I think, in terms of, in terms of active leadership from a city government. Um, and I, I also, as I think a, a previous speaker, Eric uh, from Homeline, uh, mentioned, I, I think I'm also concerned that of the, some of the narratives that came out in the memo from the city staff the other day um, that, uh, and the, and the um, Sun, Sun Current um, article as well, which seemed to intentionally or unintentionally minimize the impact of the sale of Crossroads and the displacement of their residents. Um, and understanding that data is necessary, but um, there's, a, there's a less quantifiable impact on people's lives. Um, and a lot of times in discussions around housing availability and displacement, um, that, that impact is lost or that impact is not, is not um, measured appropriately um, in terms of loss of community, loss of connections to resources. I think as, as, as Linda certainly spoke before me very eloquently um, uh, about her experience, um, and I think another layer too to this as well, uh, as, as a renter, I, I live in the city of Minneapolis, um, there's only so many affordable or uh, naturally occurring or market rate affordable units. When 700 go off the market in a matter of months, the impact on our regional market is immense as well. So, um, so again, th this is a pressure that impacts other people in the region, impacts other cities, um, other renters. Um, and, uh, and finally, I think in regards again to the memo, um, uh, you know, to me, there's, there's, uh, it's also important to, to, to not allow that this practice of purchasing um, pretty blatant discrimination. I mean, some of the statements made by the owner, Jim Soderberg, of um, now concierge apartments about the, the, the residents at the time he purchased that property, calling, calling them undesirable, um, and then implementing business practices, which pretty, pretty clearly indicated his regard or lack thereof for the humanity of people who live there, um, I think cannot become business as usual. This cannot become, this is just how housing, how housing purchases happen in our region. So I applaud um, the city of Richfield for acknowledging what happened once cannot happen again and cannot be normalized. Um, I would also encourage the city to continue to pursue um, some of the policies outlined by um, Housing Justice Center. Uh, I, I missed the previous session, heard it was very good and very productive. I'm encouraged by that. Um, and, uh, and I would also encourage, Ten seconds, Mr. I'll encourage as well the city to, to continue to view housing advocates and organizers and organizations as allies in this work um, and continue to also partner with communities, especially community most affected by these issues, listen to their voices, center them in these conversations, make them decision makers in these process that impact their lives. Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate it. Am I correct in assuming the new tenants in the front row are gonna step up and speak to us? Um, please announce your name first and your address and then sign in, as I don't have any cards so we know who you are, please. Mr. Mayor, yes. could I remind people that please don't get negative when you get up there to speak. Keep your thoughts to yourself if they're negative about any, anyone else. Let's be positive and proactive and move forward together. Thank you. Mi nombre es Cristal. Gracias y les doy las gracias por darme la oportunidad de estar aquí. Eh, rápidamente, nosotros tenemos viviendo tres años aproximadamente en Seasons Park. Uh, it, uh, my name is Crystal, and um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. Eh, como le repito, tenemos tres años viviendo en Seasons Park. Nunca hemos fallado con la renta. Nunca hemos tenido ningún problema ni con ningún vecino, ni con ningún conflicto con ni nos llamen la atención en los apartamentos ni nada. Uh, we have been at Seasons Park for three years. Uh, we've, never had any, had, we've never had any complaints. We haven't missed any payments. Um, we are not uh, people who make a lot of noise. El único problema es que hemos tenido con la oficina que les decimos que fumiguen, que nos arreglen cosas, se molestan. Uh, 
what we do ask our um, uh, landlords is that you know they fix some of the things that are are broken that uh, need replacing, and uh, they always complain when we ask for this request. In junio, ocho se nos vence el contrato. Nosotros nos fuimos en enero a decir que queríamos renovar nuevamente. June 8th is the end of our lease. Uh, we just recently went to talk to um, the management to renew our lease. No los negaron. Pregunté por qué. No me quisieron dar respuesta. Se me hace muy triste porque tengo una niña en Richmond Middle School y otro niño en Partnership Academy. Desgraciadamente no encontramos dónde vivir. Um, so uh, our request was that they renew our lease, and they denied that. Uh, now we have a young daughter who attends uh, the Richfield Middle School Publix, and another uh, young son who attends Partnership Academy. And um, we haven't been able to find anything. We have to look, and they're, this is really, really sad for us. Espero que puedan hacer algo. We really uh, hope that you guys can support us. Um, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. My name is Lisa Hendricks, and I'm the executive director and one of the founders of Partnership Academy Charter School in Richfield. Buenas noches, uh, uh, comité. Eh, yo soy Lisa Hendricks, uh, una de las uh, uh, fundadoras y uh, directoras ejecutivas de la escuela Partnership Academy. Our school has served students and families in this community for over 15 years, and we currently have 300 students. In preschool through th fifth grade, 95% of our students are Latino, and 92% of our students qualify for free and reduced lunch. Nuestra escuela uh, ha servido esta comunidad um, por más de 15 años. Uh, ahorita tenemos aproximadamente 300 estudiantes de pre-kinder a quinto grado. 95% de nuestros estudiantes son latinos. I'm here tonight to advocate for our students and families. I've worked in this community for over 15 years and have seen firsthand the struggles Richfield has had in embracing, supporting, and providing equitable opportunities for people of color in this community. Uh, yo estoy aquí uh, uh, hablando por las familias y nuestros estudiantes. Um, yo he trabajado con la comunidad por 15 años y yo he visto uh, de antemano uh, cómo nuestras familias uh, luchan por uh, sacar adelante y um, proveer a sus familias, en especial a nuestras, a nuestras familias uh, de gente de color. Under the current presidential administration and hostile political environment we live in, our students and families have had to live in fear and with great uncertainty about the most basic human needs, and this is unacceptable. Uh, y debajo de estas uh, um, elecciones presidenciales, um, Eh, nuestros estudiantes y nuestras familias han estado viviendo con uh, miedo eh, en lo que es uh, una necesidad básica uh, de, de, de humano. We can no longer afford to be passive bystanders that allow the status quo and fear of change to further oppress and erode the fabric of the community we all love so much here in Richfield. Eh, nosotros ya no podemos uh, pararnos aquí y ver uh, cómo sigue ese miedo, cómo siguen pasando estas opresiones eh, que siguen destruyendo a nuestra comunidad que queremos mucho. 30 seconds, ma'am. It's time to change and work differently so that Richfield does not replicate the very unfortunate situation that happened at Crossroads and nearly at Seasons Park. Um, nosotros no queremos que se vuelva a repetir lo que pasó en lo, lo que pasó en los apartamentos de Crossroads. The impact of these types of situation has an extremely detrimental impact on children's ability to learn and thrive at school. We need to do better and we owe it to our children. Uh, sabemos que esto también uh, eh, afecta a lo eh, afecta a cómo nosotros, nuestros estudiantes uh, Hacen en la escuela, como progresan en la escuela. The time is up, thank you. Thank you.
Uh, good, uh, good night, good evening. This is short for me, there we go. Um, city council and mayor, this is my first time here. I'm a currently new resident here in Richfield and also an educator at Partnership Academy and a community member. Um, could, could you give us your name, please? Uh, I'm sorry, my name is uh, Jonathan Ceballos Gonzalez. Um, so I would like to address housing situations that are affecting families here in Richfield um, and again, especially with the uh, um, children who attend and families who attend Partnership Academy. Um, so, uh, you know, as we know, recently an agreement was made with AEON, um, uh, the nonprofit organization regarding Seasons Park. Uh, so this has raised a lot of concerns about the stability um, that our families are experiencing here in Richfield, and there's a lot of fear about displacement, as you can see tonight. Um, so, uh, what my, you know, what my question, our community question is, can you please speak to the plants, um, you know, uh, and preservation efforts in order to support our families in remaining a part of this community? Um, recently, I had two conversations, uh, numerous conversations with two of our families. Um, who are just feeling really concerned about their ability to stay in their homes. We've just heard one here tonight, a couple here tonight. Um, so what is the framework uh, that you guys, the city officials, will create to ensure that our families remain in these homes, in these apartment buildings? And how will you include these families uh, a part of those conversations? So um, we can't repeat Crossroads again. This is a serious issue as we're going into our second week of state testings and there's a lot of load on our students' backpacks that should not, they should not be having. So um, I asked, I, I look to you guys and you know, I asked the support that our families that I need, that we need to strive here in Richfield for our, for our future, for our families and for, for, for the city. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Kellen Roberts. Uh, I live in Minneapolis. I am a teacher at Partnership Academy. Kellen, um, could you please sign in also, please? Sure. Um, I just want to strongly reiterate um, the statements that I've heard. Um, it is very frightening to me that in the last 10 days, uh, a huge segment of the community that I, uh, am charged with educating was under the threat of losing their homes. Um, I can't imagine the kind of damage that would have done to their families and their education. Um, it's, frankly, it makes me really upset that the community doesn't know about this, that there's been 10 days of dealings going on and our families were in danger of losing their homes and we knew nothing about it. So you've heard people talking here tonight and I know that the community is ready to fight back if you don't have a plan to continue this thing that's happened with Aeon. We don't know who Aeon is. Frankly, I don't know who Aeon is. I'm concerned that our families will still be displaced. We don't know if they're going to require people to have social security numbers to live there. We don't know if our undocumented community is going to be allowed to live there. The city of Richfield needs a plan to protect the tenants who live in these naturally affording low-income housing. And it can't be a one-off thing. It needs to be a concerted effort. I'm afraid for my students because I know that they're in danger of being displaced. And it seems shocking to me that in the last 10 days, this all could have happened. So I wasn't prepared to speak tonight, but after what I've heard, I felt like I needed to. So I want to uh, second what Jonathan said, and I want to make sure that Richfield has a plan for how this is going to continue and that we're going to protect our students and our families. Thank you.
Good evening, uh, Mayor, uh, City Council. My name is Bernard Campbell. Uh, I actually reside in uh, Richville right now. I was uh, a former tenant of Crossroads, and actually, uh, there was no solution um, into figuring out a different plan as far as me staying there. Um, I didn't receive any government uh, assistance or anything like that, but I did have a job. I actually had two jobs, and my fiance actually had two jobs as well. But what we fell short was the credit, the credit score. That is, is just like a smack in the face because it's like you make the money, you know, you you know you building for something better, but then at the you know at that particular time it's like it's not good enough because your credit's not good enough. Well, that's the whole reason why we're here because we're building credit, you know. Obviously, you know. Uh, but there was no solution as far as, well, okay, just pay double, uh, you know, uh, deposit, nothing. It was, oh, you don't make that? Yep, yep. You, even though you qualify here, 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 you don't qualify with the credit. And it's, it's really disrespectful because you think you're doing the right things, and then you see families getting the this place and you see how many students and, and, and the schools have to go to different places. We all have been there. We all have been in, in the school as a, as a kid and it's, and, you know, scary. Now going to a different school, you don't know anyone, you're displaced. You know, it's, it, it, it's a lot on it, especially a child, not only a child, but a whole family. Uh, I had a lot to say, but, you know, I just want to trim it down a little bit. Uh, there was a, a memo that was sent out last uh, week. I sent, I seen, uh, we read. It was really disrespectful because it stated that a thousand people who lived at Crossroads, which is actually, in fact, about 2,300 people that got displaced from Crossroads, and the majority of the people that was displaced were Latino and African American. Those numbers are just preposterous. You know, what do we have to do? What do we have in place for the city of Richfield for us to go forward? Now, I'm glad that we did have Homeline and uh, the Housing Adjustment Center and, um, you know, the pro bono lawyers to actually weigh, uh, raise awareness to the situation. But we have to do that. And I agree with everyone tonight. We have to set something in, in motion because now we're in a different place. What is to say that it's not going to happen again? You know, what, what, where's, the, where's the end? You know, it's, we have to figure something out. Um, you know, I just, I'm glad that Season Park, hopefully, like, like uh, the gentleman said, hopefully, you know, Aeon uh, will do the right thing. I don't, I don't personally know of Aeon, and, you know, he's right. What if they turn out to be not so great? I mean, but we have, the city of uh, Richfield have to put something in play so this won't happen. Thank you. Anyone else care to speak? Kind of short. Um. Hi, Mayor. My name is Itzel Naranjo. Um, I'm recently a student at Richfield High School, and I've been living in Richfield for two years now. And I really enjoy living here. It's a really nice and decent place. The neighbors are really nice. And um, I'm also um, currently living in Seasons Park with my mother. She's a single mother, so um, I'm kind of scared that we could be just misplaced from living there because new owners are there and um maybe different requirements that we might not be able to reach stay there the rent could be higher especially for a single mother with five kids it's harder for her to like be able to pay the rent plus food and other things and but i just hope that the community could help out for not not just for our family but for many that are just with single mothers and only have one job and can't afford to pay so much for rent. And that's all. Thank you.
Thank you, we appreciate that. Anyone else? If, if you're either tongue-tied this evening or you have something to say and you want to reserve it, I will guarantee you there's going to be other opportunities and other meetings where we're going to be talking about this and planning and moving forward. And what I can tell you is that, and you've heard it, you've heard it a number of times this evening, that uh, we don't intend to be observers, we be, intend to be participants. Um, the one thing we can't do is make promises because all that does is, fill, is build false premises and false hopes, and I'm not going to promise something that we're not in control of and what we can't guarantee. But I can promise that you're not going to be lacking people working on your behalf and trying to move everything in the right direction. So once, I see, once again, no promises. No one can make promises because it's not our money, it's not our buildings. What we can do is exercise the rights we have and the influence we have to try to keep moving in the right direction and make sure that nobody gets displaced, no one has to leave school, and no one has to live in fear of if they're going to be there next week or next month. So that's what I can assure you. It's not a promise, but it's the best we can give you. And if that's not acceptable, then uh, we really don't have any alternatives. And you need, you need to work with us. You don't need to, to, to think that we're going to shirk the duty or back away from it. So don't walk away from here thinking that because we can't make promises, we're not going to do everything we can in your benefit because that's what we're doing. And I can stand by that promise on my behalf of myself and the other people up here on the dais. So thank you for being here. Thank you for, for respecting everybody that came up and spoke, respecting everybody that's here tonight and going out of here with a sense of hope uh, that, that things are going to work out. So thanks again for being here. With that, I will adjourn the meeting.